Good morning, everybody. My name is Darlene, and I have Parkinson's disease. I was kind of thinking today that maybe we would talk about clothing, getting dressed, taking away a person's independence. If you're unable to look after yourself, then your independence gets taken away from you. And so therefore you want to keep that as long as you possibly can. I've just got to turn my fan on here, sorry. So you want to keep your independence as long as you possibly can, or most people do. So when you notice that something is um, causing you a problem, you look for a solution. I shared with you about my footwear issues, and I've found very strange solutions, I got to tell you. I have now got a very thick piece of uh, uh, elastic, an uh, inch and a half wide, but a soft elastic. It's not a hard elastic. And I sewed it by hand, if you can imagine. You should have seen me trying to sew that by hand. It, it took two hours to put a couple of stitches in. It was ridiculous. But I managed to do it. And I sewed these two bands into a circle. And I had a pair of warm slipper socks that did the job but kept falling down and going off my feet. So I put those elastic bands around the top. They're not so tight as to cut off circulation, but they're tight enough to hold them up. So that's been my solution there. So I'm happy to have that solution. So then other things, putting your socks on. That's another very difficult thing. Now I can do it if I sit on my bed. It's the only place I can put my socks on. But I can do it if I sit on the bed and kind of go sideways and pull my foot up. I can only do that if my body is working. I can't do it if I'm in a frozen up situation. But, you know, I, I can get them on. But failing to be able to get them on myself, there are plenty of medical devices that allow you to put a sock over the end of this little plastic thing, put your foot in it. And then you slide this out and it brings the sock up. <laughs> there is wonderful products out there. You just have to go looking for them. There's also a pair of shoes that has a light in the toe. So, you know, when you buy your children the, the, the special shoes that as they put their foot down, they sparkle all, all along the edges and the, the little girls love it. The little boys love it. Well, Parkinson's patient love the light at the toe because what it does is it doesn't shine directly down it shines out about three or four inches in front of your shoe and then as you put your foot down it shows the next step three or four inches further and it allows you to sort of move towards that I don't have those shoes but I have my dots I have shared before my dots on the floor let me just see if this turns around now it's supposed to this is my new machine let's try and turn it around oh there so you can see my dots on the floor it looks a little bizarre but that's how I can get around okay so now I will come back and around here there we are so um there's things that I can do for the shoes Another problem that women have, obviously not men, women have is putting a brassiere on. That becomes very difficult. Anything with a hook is hard. Even if it closes in the front, it's still very difficult. So then you have to be relegated to either a camisole situation if you're a very small breasted woman or a, a bra that you can put over your head like a sports bra. And thankfully that has allowed me to keep that independence. If I couldn't get myself dressed or undressed, and I would need to bring help in, that's a loss of your independence. It's also not free. So, you know, you have to think about what the cost of everything is. Everything is going up these days. You, you don't want to waste your money on things that you can do yourself. So you try to go as long as you can. Now, I will say, when you're having a shower or whatever, it can take you longer to take your clothes off and on than it does to have your shower and wash your hair and do everything else. It's not a fast process. 
but it doesn't matter how long it takes me. As long as I can do it myself, then I'm happy. Now, another thing, I have found that dresses are much more convenient. I never used to wear a dress when I was young, um, but their dresses are much more convenient for going to the washroom. When you have underwear and pants, maybe it's too much information, but that's two things to bring up. And it can be difficult at times. Like you, if you, if you only had to go to the washroom in good times, you would have no trouble. But you have to go to the washroom when your body's not working. And when my body is not working, it's rigid and I can't feel my fingers. And if you can't feel your fingers, uh, you can't easily pull up your pants or button a shirt. Oh, heaven's sakes. I've got this purple sweater that I like to wear and it's got dark buttons and it's a dark sweater. So I just the other day went and got a little sewing kit that has buttons in it. And I'm going to, as silly as this sounds, I'm going to put a white button on the one button that I do up. I don't do them all up. I only do the one up to hold it on. And I'm going to put a white button on so that I can get it through that buttonhole. So um, you just do the very best that you, that you can. I'm trying to think what other clothing things that I might have changed. Well, I did buy, I always have tended to buy my clothes a little bit too big. And I have found that that can be a problem because then they're sloppy. So yet I've learned that I'm going to have to buy my clothes a little bit better fitting. But I had bought this from Pennington's, a one piece. I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't know what I was thinking. Who, they, I guess they called it a romper or a jumper or something, but it, it was trousers and a top, but they were all connected but it had snaps and I thought, yes, I know when you go to the washroom, you have to take the whole thing down, but these snaps will be so much better than buttons. Well, they're not, they're harder than buttons. I did not know that until I bought this. And I realized that this is, snaps are not a good thing for me. I can't, I can't seem to push them in or whatever. So I, I wasted my money onto that, but that's all right. I find somebody that can make use of it. Um, I'm trying to think, is there any other? I don't think there's any other clothing issues that I've, I've had, but the new things pop up all the time. That's just the way it is. So I'm gonna end on a story. And of course, if I'm telling about clothing, my story has to do with clothing. So I went out shopping one day. This was a long time ago. And my husband went with me, which is also rare. Like I would normally go by myself in or with my daughter or something you know, with a friend um, when I would be going clothes shopping because that's not something that would interest him. But anyway, we he was with me and we went into the store and I saw a blouse that I quite liked. Now it had a rack that went up to size 16 and then it had another rack that started at 18 up to 24. So anyway, I the time was much smaller than I am right now, but I had taken the size 16 and I had taken it in and it, it, it was not quite big enough. It was, it fit me, but it wasn't comfortable. So I said to my husband, can you go out there to that other rack and get me a size 18? And I will try that one on. I might need a 20, but we'll, we'll try the 18 on. So he went over, I never expected that he was going to look at the tags. Never expected that. Anyway, he looked at it and I could hear him say to the sales clerk, can I speak to you? And I thought, oh Lord, what is he found wrong now? I, they, they were not expensive. What is going on, right? So anyway, I hear him say to the woman, I've noticed here that on this rack up to size 16, that these blouses are $5 less than the very same blouse that's on the size 18 to 24. Um, there's not that much difference in the material. He said, if you look, there's very little difference in the material. So he says, I'm not exactly sure. Why should my wife, who is a larger woman, be penalized by $5 for having to get the larger size? Well, I'm in the changing room and I hear him describing me 
to the sales clerk as my wife is a larger woman. Can you even imagine how I felt? I thought to myself, this woman out there is wondering what I look like and when I emerge from here, there's going to be looks coming my way and whatnot. But anyway, I came out and I said to Bill, I said, you should never have said that. I said, you always pay more when you're a larger person. You always pay more. But anyway, he didn't understand that that's the way the businesses ran. So anyway, up we go to the cashier and I'm just avoiding it. I just thought, oh, here we go. He's going to tell this lady the same thing. But she rings it up and she rings it up at the cheaper price. And I said, oh, I said, that one is actually more money. And she goes, no, your husband was quite right. Larger women shouldn't have to pay more. I got it for $5 cheaper. But anyway, they didn't change the rest of the rack. They kept it, but I got it for $5 cheaper and, you know, learned my lesson. Don't take him shopping. <laughs> anyway, hope you all have a nice day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.